Good morning, Headmaster, Reverend, teachers, and students. I am Miss Ng, and for those who don't know me, I teach English, and I am the Secondary Transfer Counselor for Centre for Further Studies. Over the years, there are more and more students applying to overseas schools, and I thought I would share my experience with you about my studying in UK. Well, first of all, I lived in South Wales for eight years. Little box in the red. And I first lived in Killeen. It's the star at the bottom. It's a nice small village. And then I went to school in Monmouth, which is on the border between England and Wales, right up there at the top corner. Okay, this is the primary school that I attended for one year. At that time, I was the only student from Hong Kong in the whole school. This is Monmouth. I spent seven years in this town while I was in secondary school. There's not much to do in this town. No cinema, no fast food place. The closest were about half an hour drive away. So it's an ideal place for studying, no distraction. This is the school that I went to, Haberdash's Monmouth School for Girls. This year it is celebrating its 124th anniversary. And to be honest, the whole school when I was there felt like it was haunted at night. Like DBS, the school is situated at the top of the hill and it overlooks the whole town. At night, there are floodlights shining at the main building, which makes it feel like a haunted mansion. The top floor of the main building, if you can see, Sorry, the top floor of the main building was a boarding house for G7 students, and like many schools with a long history, there were plenty of ghost stories to go along with it. For example, a matron was accidentally pushed down a laundry chute, and after that she haunted the junior boarding house and to make sure the girls were good. And we were. During the time I was there, none of us actually left the room after lights out. We all stayed inside in case we get caught by the ghost. When, I, when my sister and I first started in this school, again, we were the only two students from Hong Kong out of a school of around 700 students. So over the, but over the years, more students from Hong Kong joined the school, and by the time I graduate, there were about 15 students. This is my G12 form photo, with the headmistress, form teachers, and prefects sitting in the front row. I don't know whether you can find me, but I can tell you I was the only Chinese girl in the whole, in the whole photo. Photos with my friends. The school ties. The different ties represented the different houses. The dining hall with the school motto, serve and obey, to remind us all girls that we need to serve the community, serve everybody, and obey the rules. The school bridge connecting the main building to the rest of the school on the other side of the road. This is the brother school at the bottom of the town. We collaborate in drama productions, concerts, charity functions, as well as school uh, sixth form classes. We also have school, uh, official school functions with the boys' school as well. For example, the May Ball. It's for upper and lower six forms, that's G12 and 13 students, for both the girls' school and the boys' school, where we get to dress up in boys in tuxedos, girls in ball dresses. A boarders' Christmas party, where we have turkey and Christmas pudding, and one year they even do it properly, they put a pound coin in the Christmas pudding, hope, hoping somebody will get it. And, sorry, School is like a family where students and teachers join forces to celebrate happy events. And as you can see, I'm going to talk, tell you about one event that was a wedding celebration. Here is a photo of students from different grades working together to prepare a surprise for a teacher who was about to get married. And a teacher, another teacher, got us the keys to the car of the bride-to-be. And both teachers and students together, we joined forces, filled the car with balloons, and Kling filmed wrapped the whole car. That was our gift to the teachers to say congratulations. And here, some, of the, some pictures of my boarding life. These are some of my roommates, dorm mates, and photos of in junior form, celebrating birthday and stuff. 
and also life on campus. Studying under the sun, which was rare occasion, but also waiting for holidays at the end of the day. And these pictures are just a fraction of my life in Monmouth. But what is my point today? Well, I have been asked whether a certain score in, is good or not based on ranking. But what I hope to tell you that is that don't only focus on ranking of a score. Okay? When you're choosing secondary school or university. But also ask yourself these questions. Where do I want to study? In a town, city, or in the countryside? What kind of learning environment do I want? For example, do you mind studying in a city with heavy traffic outside your classroom window or somewhere in the sub suburb which is nice and quiet? Where I fit into the new school culture? You can find these things out uh, when you go for a school visit. The internet can only tell you so far about facts and data about the school, but if you have the means, you should visit the, visit the place to get the actual feel of it and to see whether you like it or not. Student-teacher ratio. How big are the classes? I had been in classes where there was only two students in the, in the whole class uh, for, with one teacher. Do I want to study with a heavy Chinese population or do I want a place where I am a minority but can improve my English? I was lucky during my time in UK studying in schools where people in Hong Kong would consider too remote at the time. And finally, will I be able to explore my interests both in academics and ECA, and hoping to be able to find a balance between the two as well? Well, I hope for those of you who are thinking about studying abroad will consider the points I mentioned here. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.